right, so, so far so good with these uh, use subs, but there's a type of integral that we haven't looked at yet, and that is the definite integral. So you can still use use subs with these, um, but you have two options on which way you want to go. Um, so one of them is that when you do the use substitution, uh, you not only have to do it with you know, the, the function in there, but you also have to do it with the bounds because the, these bounds are still in terms of x. So we're gonna switch them and get them in terms of u. So u, let's choose it so it's four minus x. So then the du is a negative dx. So that means I need a negative inside and I also need one outside. But it's a definite integral, so I need to do something with these. So when x is equal to zero, that's the lower bound. If I plug that in for x, that means u is going to equal four. And when x is four, that's the upper bound, I'm going to still plug it in for x. And my u comes out to equal zero. So these are the new bounds, uh, and you want to keep them in <clears throat> in the same order. <clears throat> so x equals zero, that was the lower bound. So whatever you end up with for its answer for u is still the lower bound. The zero, that came from when x was four or the upper, so the zero is now the upper. <clears throat> so even if it's out of order, like don't worry about it, just, just keep going with it it will work out. Okay, so we need to integrate this. So the integral of root u or u to the half would be two thirds u to the three halves. And we're gonna integrate from four to zero. So we'll leave the negative two thirds out on the front uh, and then we'll plug in the zero and then plug in the four. So the zero would be this and then minus four to the three halves. So zero to the power of three halves is zero. Four to the three halves, remember fractional exponents means there's a power and a radical happening. So since it's a two in the denominator, that's the square root. So the square root of four is two, two to the third is eight. And we end up with 16 over three. So changing those limits, so those bounds of integration, it's convenient, but it's not something that's always required. You can leave the bounds alone if you want to, like you don't have to switch them as long as you switch everything back into terms of X or in terms of the original variable. Uh, so let's try that with this one. So U would equal one minus X DU negative dx so I need a negative inside and outside again okay so I've got a negative and then the an integral of e to the u and I'm gonna leave the bounds off because the 1 and the 2 those are in terms of X and they're not in terms of u so and we're using a different method for this um, so if you're not going to change the bounds, just leave them out. And so then just integrate. Get it back in terms of x. And now you can throw in the old bounds that we had before, the 1 and the 2. Because they were in terms of x, well now it's in terms of x. So plug in uh, the 2. Plug in the one. And negative e to the negative first uh, plus one uh, or 
1 minus 1 over e or e minus 1 over e. So you can choose which of the two methods you want to do. Um, and, you know, I have people ask, like, well, which one is better? Like, which one it works the best? Well, it's like, well, it comes down to you. Um, some people like to go this way better. Some people like this way better. So it's personal preference. Um, I'm not going to force you to, um, to pick one versus the other. Um, you have to know how to use both of them. Um, but you're going to decide, you know, which one you like the best. So just choose which one is the best for you. Uh, and it does take some practice. Personally, I tend to kind of go with both. If it's easy to change the bounds, then I usually just sort of do it. If I can do it in my head, um, it's something that's quick and then I don't have to worry about switching it back in terms of X. If it's something that's complicated, um, then I usually don't and I'll just integrate it and keep the old bounds uh, in terms of X. So you can use a hybrid of both of them um, or just one or the other. Uh, so you have to decide. All right, so we'll stop this video here and the next one we'll finish off this section.